Uh, okay, so let me just do some final checks to make sure that we are live. Mm, great. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining to the today live. Uh, so we are uh, starting the live today. I think we are uh, live and global on Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, as well as Facebook. Uh, today, uh, I plan to talk. I mean, uh, this is one of the my talk that I'm going alone. So bear with me if I check some of the uh, 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 when I check uh, some of the uh, software to make sure that everything is going correctly. But hopefully, after uh, this test period, everything should be fine. If you have a question, uh, if you are in uh, Instagram, you can. Uh, uh, always uh, send me, uh, you can always uh, send me uh, messages to through Instagram, but also you can email me uh, through my email, uh, hajiagayat gmail.com. If you are in LinkedIn, you can just put a comment there or at YouTube also you can put a comment there. You can always send me email during this live, uh, hajiagayat gmail.com if you have any questions I mean, about the live. So I will try to look at it and hopefully uh, answer if there is any uh, questions. So uh, that sounds good. And uh, now let's uh, uh, start the things. Just, let me just check this one as well to make sure. Okay. So I think we are there also live on YouTube. And I want to just make sure that, uh, good. So the live chat is there as well. So you can also, uh, if you have any question, you can talk about it. Uh, great. So today we want to talk about the recent moves on a stock market. And this one, uh, I wanted to give a, give a little background about myself, why I've chosen this topic to talk about. So uh, as you may know, I'm working on, uh, algorithms and game theory. And I believe if you work on game theory, uh, like you should spend some time on uh, a stock market because in some sense, that's one of the most complicated game of our own times. And understanding it, it would be great. And of course, understanding it, you cannot just read it from the materials, but also you should go and do it yourself. Of course, you may lose, you may gain, but that's the idea that you need to do that. So that was the idea that I started actually doing some uh, day trading in the past like two and a half years. And I have uh, created several software actually for that, even doing uh, automated uh, trading, etc. Uh, I will, uh, some of this software, I have uh, prepared it uh, at the website that I have that created predicta.com. I will show you more on that, but I will talk maybe more at the end about it. Uh, so this is a predict double a.com. You can get some short term predictions. There are some of the software that I have written for that and some of the infrastructure that I have created for that. So that's the source of essentially my research and as well as I mean my a study, deep study, I have done lots of day trading myself and following the market at least for the past two and a half year to three years. And I, of course, I have spent quite a bit to uh, think about it. So these are somehow the summary, not the whole summary, but just some uh, thinking about the current situation in the market. Uh, great. So, uh, so that's uh, a little bit about uh, my background and also, I wanted to add, uh, these are actually, this uh, stock market, there are lots of nice research problems are there. Of course, there are several 
papers about predict prediction, etc. I think there is a lot you can do that. And also, if you are interested in theory, actually, that's another place that you can do some theoretical work. As far as I know, there is not much done, for example, for trading, proving some algorithm is good or like especially in the worst case. And this is some of the thing that we have done it in a paper that recently we have is, uh, several co-authors. We are talking about trading profit. Essentially, the idea is that if you want to trade, how you can have a simple algorithm that based on some thresholds of buy and sell, you will do that. And you can say that in the worst case, actually, you have a good guarantee comparing to profit in this case, a person who knows the future. So this is like, if you talk about profit inequality, et cetera, there is a lot of work on that. And there is a, a nice research that you can actually do it. And we have obtained very nice results there. I think if you ask me, you can, we will uh, put the papers on archive soon, hopefully, and then you can take a look at it. But anyhow, so that's just some background about why we want to talk about the stock market. Now, uh, so one question that actually, uh, has been arised recently. And you know, uh, and this is about the uh, stock market uh, crash that's happened. So since uh, November, uh, let me actually share some of this. I try to talk more about this and don't just uh, do it uh, over, I mean, uh, this live, we try to have it more words on it, not much as slides or, other stuff. So I'm just showing some diagram for some of you who can see, but at the same time, I try to mention the important points of these diagrams. Uh, so let me just uh, share the screen uh, here. Mm. Just give me one second. Mm. Yes. So let me share this one and at the same time, let me also. This. Hmm. Hmm. So just hmm. give me one second, such a thing. Uh, great. Okay, so I think uh, we have the current uh, diagram. Uh, so just make sure that everything is fine here. Uh, yes. So as you will see, this is a S and P five hundred. There are generally two, three. Uh, I mean, indexes or like somehow the average in the market that you may take a look at it. There is one uh, is Dow Jones. Uh, uh, Industrial uh, somehow average. There is uh, this S and P five hundred, and there is Nasdaq. Nasdaq tends to be more uh, tech heavy. S and P is somehow in the middle, and uh, Dow is somehow average over uh, lots of sections of the economy. And this is, uh, of course, we are talking about the uh, um, U.S. economy here, and as well as uh, stocks that are you know, registered in US. So uh, if you see this one, this is the, somehow the history of uh, uh, S&P from 1983 until now. And if you uh, see, so you will see there are some ups, like one in 2000. Then we had the down, essentially the crash, like almost one, one and a half year uh, until September 2000. Two, and then we go up again. Uh, and here uh, it takes almost seven years, for example, for SP to reach the high that it had it in year 2000. So in 2000, it went down, and then it 2007 came back to the same place. And again, uh, it went down. Uh, this is for the Great uh, Recession starting 2007. 2008 that went down to 2009. And again, it's something like uh, around 2012 or that it reaches back. So it's something like, again, it takes something like four or five years to come back to the place that it was there. And then since then, since 2000, uh, and essentially even earlier, 2008, it's just going up. 
Uh, it was going up until uh, 2022, that at that time, actually, because of COVID, we had a, I mean, crash, essentially, uh, and uh, whole, whole thing had been crashed, uh, but that was a very short period. And again, it came up with a much higher slope until uh, I will say November of uh, 2021. So uh, at that time, so November 2021, then a stock essentially just is just going down. Now I will say probably for something like uh, around nine months. And the question is that uh, one thing that was hit a lot during this one it are the tech heavy stocks, uh, especially NASDAQ. And one question is uh, that the people will ask is that, I mean, whether this would be very similar to 2000, uh, 2000 essentially dot, uh, come bubble crash or it is different. So that's the thing that I wanted to discuss here. And that I will say some similarities and why I think it might be actually different this time. Uh, great. So uh, I think that's a thing that I wanted to just uh, show you on that. Uh, we can now uh, discuss about some of this thing between this. Uh, the comparison, especially because of this uh, crash that we have, it, since nine months ago versus the uh, like 2000, uh, 2000 to 2002 uh, bubble crash. Uh, great, so let me just make sure that see my notes that everything is there. Okay, so uh, let's start, I mean, uh, so what did, uh, let's first discuss about the reasons that we had this crash since November. What were the, uh, issues that uh, this happened. Uh, so uh, and one of them uh, uh, essentially was the fact that uh, like a US uh, federal bank, here we are talking about the US uh, reserve, US federal bank, all of them the same things, essentially the Fed, we are talking about them. And uh, like the Fed reserve chair or the uh, is uh, currently uh, Jeremy Powell. So he's the main figure in announcing all the Fed, uh, US Fed, uh, Federal Reserve or Federal Bank uh, policies. And uh, if you, uh, some of you remember, this was something that was uh, mentioned uh, almost, uh, let me just stop sharing actually. Great. So we can now uh, talk uh, much easier. Uh, uh, great. Uh, yes. So uh, this was some of the things that the people, uh, uh, lots of people actually mentioned almost a year ago that uh, uh, inflation is going up and you should do something. But uh, one of the claim that done by Fed chair and others that this is some kind of, I mean, temporary inflation and hopefully in a few months, there would be not much inflation. This of course was not true. And they didn't stop some of the policies that they will call it quantitative easing. So the, what are quantitative easing? Quantitative easing actually comes from, uh, I mean, a few things that the US government is doing or US Federal Bank is doing, such that whenever there is a hard time in the economy, it can compensate that. Uh, among the things that they are doing, they are bringing interest rate down. That is uh, very important because uh, for them, when the interest rate comes down, then the money would be cheaper. The ac economic activity would be easier. So then it would be generally growth in economy. That's one way that they are doing. The other thing that if it is uh, needed and the people that they are doing, and they have done it both in 2008 when there was great recession, as well as now, uh, like during the COVID, they, they are um, something uh, which is called borrowing from the thin air or uh, it essentially Fed uh, buys uh, 
each month is a huge amount, like I think it's above 100 billion, that they were buying bonds. And in some sense, they are producing, getting the money that, I mean, it is from the thin air. In some sense, it's uh, just uh, publishing or printing uh, dollars. And with that, they are buying uh, like bonds. And essentially, this will go, when you enter the money into the system, it goes to a stock market and everything. So these two things uh, that the uh, low interest rate and in some sense printing money and this money is buying and put it uh, into a stock market generally make the stock market very hot like because you will just put the money there. And we are talking more about this uh, later. So that was the thing that generally happened in the time of quantitative uh, easing. And uh, I think now they have built this uh, term. And so during this quantitative easing, that uh, easing actually, that's what's happened until I will say December, uh, like December 2021, they uh, poured lots of money to the market. And also the interest rate was almost zero. And how the people like say, maybe from more than a year ago or even before that, they mentioned actually the, interest, the inflation is a huge problem and uh, you should resolve that. They say that this would be temporary, so it will be gone. And again, uh, both of these activities actually bring a lot of things for, can bring actually a lot to inflation. Uh, why, of course, when you print the money, then everything becomes more expensive. And then the interest rate uh, is low. Generally, as I mentioned, the economy becomes better. And when the economy becomes better, there are more demands for the, items because everyone has more money. Maybe they have more jobs, they have more money. So they want to buy more. So that improves this. And generally when the demand is high, also the prices are going up. So that's the thing that has happened uh, during the past, uh, like I think that during the COVID time. So they have done it. They, I think at the beginning, it was necessary to put the money and we saw very quick return, like maybe in four or five months, essentially, especially, uh, like something like NASDAQ or even uh, um, uh, uh, others like S&P and uh, Dow, they return to the place that they were there because of these things. But they continue this, uh, I believe actually for a longer period that needed. And uh, so the people knew that this kind of quantitative easing will actually uh, increase the risk of inflation. Uh, this is uh, some of the thing that comes back now back in 2000. So I will talk probably lots of this during the time that uh, like from 2000 until now, there might be something happened before that. I may not refer that much to that. There might be some other things that the people can talk about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, my focus would be on from 2000 almost. Uh, the interesting things uh, that uh, I have, uh, mentioned during uh, this time. So in, uh, from uh, this is the experience that they had it from 2007 or 2008. That was the time of, uh, call it great recession. Uh, this was the housing bubble market that essentially that crashed and lots of bank went uh, quite red and some bankrupted uh, because of the uh, mortgage issues and the fact that the housing market actually went down. And uh, during that time, they have uh, actually used this type of quantitative easing. That's the one that I know. And at that time, interestingly, the, in the inflation didn't change that much. So it was a good experience for them. So they put the money and uh, they actually saved some of these companies like GM or others. And later, actually, they could sell those stocks or bonds, everything, and they could get some profit. And generally, this is the idea that if it is a, in the correct way, when you borrow something from the thin air, it means that from you don't have the money, you just borrow it. You should return that money there. If it remains in the economy, you should sell it and essentially somehow void this part of the money that you borrowed. You didn't have the money, you just printed the money. So you should actually maybe burn the money in some sense or burn the dollars. So if this happens, you make sure that there is not too, there is not much uh, dollar in the economy. But uh, I don't believe that that quite bit happens. So not 
all the money that's borrowed in 2008 actually to return to the thin air. So the money remained there. And uh, as I uh, have uh, talked about it and shown uh, the diagram, from 2008 until 2020, we had a very uh, essentially uh, the, all this stock market, especially S&P and tech, went quite a bit up. Why? Because during this time, they didn't also uh, uh, essentially kept the interest rate very low. The good thing is that there was not much, much inflation. And if the interest rate is good, they, did, they stopped pouring money, essentially. I think back in maybe 2009, or 2010, they stopped pouring money. And of course, one other thing that they are doing about some of this kind of uh, stimulus packages, that's the third thing that actually I forgot to mention. That's another thing that separately, the US government decided to actually give uh, some part of money that they got it from taxes, they return it to people. And that uh, from by different uh, measures, some of them by unemployment uh, income, or sometimes there are some checks that we have seen it recently, and uh, or some of the mortgage loan that they gave it in 2008, so some help for the mortgage loan. And these are the ways that also they can do it such that it is the hardness of economy. And all of them in 2008 actually didn't add that much to inflation. So that was a good experience for them and said, okay, let's do it again. During the COVID time, let's do this one and, uh, Again, pour the money, uh, put uh, do this kind of quantitative easing, as I mentioned, somehow print the money and buy stock or bonds, and also uh, pour money in terms of stimulus packages, like very big ones that they put it. And the hope was that this would be not similar, would be similar to 2008, there was not much inflation, which didn't happen because at some point there is some kind of phase transitions that when you put a lot of money, then, <laughs> It should show up somewhere. And even in 2008, I will say that some part of this money that was added, it actually went to a stock market. And that, that was the reason that we had a very high slope, like very gross uh, rate for tech companies, especially. Because these are the companies that they, or the part of the economy that they use a lot from uh, low interest rates. And uh, yeah, the low interest rate, especially because uh, there you can borrow the money. And if you lose money that lots of these tech companies may do at the beginning, uh, so it's not a big deal because you know that there is not much interest. And later, when you're profitable, you can compensate that. So in some sense, even there, uh, these uh, things that I have uh, uh, mentioned, uh, very high slope that we had it from uh, 2008 to 2020, uh, that was somehow this impact of uh, this quantitative easing in 2008, uh, but not much inflation. But this time, actually, we see a huge inflation. And that's the thing that uh, back in, I think, December, November or December, uh, Fed decided that we want to stop uh, lots of this quantitative easing and actually now start increasing the interest rate. And this has happened uh, like in a very rapid phase. First, I think it started in February by uh, like the interest rate went up by 0 0.25. And then it started, I think uh, then in May was 0 0.5 and in June was 0 0.75. And these are like a huge interest rate increase even comparing the past, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 years. So it's a huge increase things. At the hope that uh, uh, this uh, actually slows down economy and uh, uh, causes that, I mean, less demands and hopefully the inflation becomes under control. So we will discuss that. So that's somehow the things that I want to say, uh, what was one of the main reasons that happens because of this, uh, Fed, uh, uh, like policy essentially. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, so during this time also we had this uh, Russian war uh, that started back in February. I think there was some stress about it probably in January and before that the US was mentioning that uh, this uh, Russia may attack actually uh, Ukraine. And that's another thing that also 
adds a lot. I mean, the Russian economy is not that big, but it supplies gas and uh, oil and several other things like even uh, lumber or other things uh, uh, like uh, lots of uh, food, etc. for the rest of the world, uh, Ukraine as well. So they are also producing this and that's, uh, that's one uh, issue that also somehow is bad toward the economy. And this uh, actually caused further uh, inflation because now, especially for the food or gas or other things become more expensive. And if they become more expensive, then of course the inflation goes up. So that's the uh, second thing. And uh, there was also one other thing about the uh, COVID supply chain issues. So during the COVID, lots of people essentially spend at home or in some sense, the demand for several parts of the economy went down. And after COVID, and some of these people actually, because there was not much, and it was a long term, like one and a half year to two years. So the people actually left their jobs. So these companies, some of them become bankrupted, those that they were doing supply chain and especially transportation, etc. So they, when the COVID almost gone, it's not gone, I think it came back again now, but at least not in the full force, like in the killing force, I will say, uh, that it was uh, before. So during this time, then we needed, uh, the people came out, then the demand increased and there was not much uh, supply uh, and the facilities that they can deliver these demands. And that's another thing that caused this inflation. And uh, both inflation actually and uh, adverse uh, events to the economy as a whole. Uh, so that's the third thing that actually these three things cause uh, inflation, and in general, a downturn to economy. And in particular, uh, this has been different for different stocks. So I think at the end, everything went down as I showed you here, almost S&P or NASDAQ. NASDAQ, uh, it is more tech heavy. It is essentially uh, all of this, as I mentioned, these are average of several uh, stocks. Uh, for example, NASDAQ is considered more uh, Components of ticks are there, so there are more uh, uh, essentially uh, stock uh, ticks stuck there when they take the average. So that was hit more. Now uh, let's. Uh, so, so that was the things, and I think let me just make sure that I have uh, mentioned uh, everything that I wanted to mention. Yeah. Now uh, during this uh, two thousand. From December, the reverse term, I don't know whether this term was there before or not. This is called quantitative tightening uh, versus quantitative uh, easing. And here we try to, the US economy, uh, like the Fed, uh, and here again, by Fed, I mean US uh, Federal Reserve or Federal Bank, like in total, they decided to slow down economy because the, that's the way to, that's one way to fight inflation. If uh, the economy goes down, it means that the people may lose jobs. Uh, the people may have less money in their pocket. The demand will go down. And when the demand goes down because of the market uh, uh, equilibrium type of things, then we expect that the prices goes down because there is not much demand for them. That's, so that's a way essentially to decrease the inflation. That's the thing that has happened uh, during uh, 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 this time. And there are some questions I will try to come back to that. Uh, please, uh, you can send me an email or, uh, I mean, if you are in, especially if you are in um, Instagram, you can send me an email that would be easier for me because of the broadcasting, I am doing broadcasting and several things, but I will check uh, LinkedIn and YouTube live chat. So if you are sending any comments there, I will try to take a look at those things as well. And again, we are live, we are global on all these things, uh, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. So please feel free to come and I mean, ask questions. We'll be happy 
if I can answer again. Uh, I wanted to also emphasize this number that I mentioned. These are a lot of numbers. I try to memorize some of them. Some of them may be not quite accurate or something. Uh, please uh, forgive me for that. You can check all of this. I think here, this is more, I will say the research part and maybe I will call it a deep dive into current uh, stock market crash. That's the way that I'm uh, considering this. And again, this is my first life that I went alone. So uh, if there are some hiccups here also, please uh, forgive me. So hopefully it will improve in the future. But here we try to understand better the thing, at least my understanding and hopefully, I mean, a good part of it should be also correct uh, for this. Uh, good. So uh, we discussed this one. So this was this inflation, this ad, uh, adverse uh, things that happened, uh, as we just mentioned, uh, COVID supply chains, Russian war, and uh, US uh, Federal Bank uh, stopping pouring money and actually do the reverse. Instead of quantitative easing, just go back directly from quantitative easing, reverse the directions and go uh, quantitative uh, uh, tightening. And uh, one other uh, term that you are seeing actually quite a bit, it is uh, something called uh, soft, land, soft landing. So what is the idea of this soft landing? Uh, the idea is that can we bring the inflation down? I think something they have is something that around 3% or some 2-3%, while we are not going into recession. And what is the recession? I mean, again, you can see the, the exact definition, but uh, like the main definition that you can find in uh, Investopedia or Wikipedia or others, Investopedia actually is a good one. You can see for lots of these investment terms, you can get it from there. Uh, it means that in two quarter, like two, three months things, the economy actually contracts. And there is some measures to uh, like measure whether the, what is the, current growth rate of economy. So if we have negative uh, growth rate for two consecutive quarter, we call it recession. And what is soft landing is that can we bring the interest rate under control, like maybe in the range of two to three, two to 3% while we are not going to recession. And that's actually, I think the main question that uh, the answer to this, uh, in particular by Fed Chair, uh, like Jeremy Powell, that's a very important one. Whenever he talks about this soft landing and whether this soft landing is possible. Uh, because what do they do in the quantitative tightening? In some sense, they try to make the economy worse as much as possible, such that the demand comes down. And so this is a natural way that you somehow, mm, artificially, you will go to recession. Because recession means essentially the economy is bad for the two quarter at least. Uh, so uh, that's the idea that whether soft landing is possible or not. And uh, so uh, this soft landing is important because if you go to recession, then generally also that is something that the stock market will go further down there. Currently, we are not in recession as far as we know. Uh, but uh, the people will look at these things. And good. So these are some of the discussion that we had it. Uh, and, uh, and as we mentioned, like in the diagrams, so uh, we were talking about this uh, 2000, uh, uh, the year 2000 uh, uh, double, uh, like <clears throat> dot com bubble that was crashed and the 2000, uh, 17, 2000, uh, 2007, 2008, housing market crash. And both of them uh, create actually uh, quite a bit of uh, recession. The second one called a uh, great recession. And for the first one, it took almost seven years to come back, like the average come back to the same place. And for the housing market, it was a bit less, maybe <clears throat> around uh, four or five years. And the question is that how long does it take for now essentially to come back <clears throat> to the same place? So we saw that S&P goes down, not S&P. I mean, uh, 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 this is the, also another term that they are using for the bear market. So uh, there is uh, two terms that they are, I mean, it is used. One is uh, uh, something we will call it corrections. Correction if the, like some of these uh, averages that uh, S&P uh, Dow, or um, uh, NASDAQ, they are coming 
more than 10% down from the high. At that time, it is called, so if you come 10% down, it is called correction. And if you come 10% more, like means 20% total, then we say that we are in the bear market. And uh, that's the thing that happened for NASDAQ for a long time. S&P was uh, there also, I don't know the current number, we, did, we are there above or below, uh, but that's also happened for S&P. And NASDAQ, uh, sorry, Dow didn't come that much yet because that's average over uh, bigger things. But uh, during this time, uh, uh, Actually, this thing, uh, tech market uh, had a very bad hit. And this was because there is another reason. All these three reasons that I have mentioned are there for the tech market, for tech. And also one more reason is that uh, during the COVID time, the people were at home and they were just using uh, uh, all of this, uh, I mean, softwares on the computers. So during this time, uh, generally, the people spend more time on that. Generally, this you can uh, think about that the time that the people spend on uh, this software generally means money for them and income for them. So their income went quite a bit up, and the people uh, became very uh, uh, like uh, uh, interested and uh, uh, hopeful that the growth will be that high forever. That of course it cannot be true. And because of that, their uh, market share went quite a bit up. So to just uh, give some examples here, I think these are some interesting things that uh, happened. Uh, for example, uh, Netflix, uh, these are, and these companies are very big companies. These are like, for example, Netflix is the one that has been there almost the time that Amazon was there. I think it's something from around almost 2000. So these are big companies, they're not just some startups. So went almost from near to 700 stock, went to something around 173, I think maybe around one, even a bit less, maybe 168 or something like this. I just say this one approximately. So Netflix is a company that was a very, I mean, robust company. So like in terms of a stock, didn't, had that much of an issues, especially during this time from November to now, they had two earning announcements. And it is natural, I mean, when the people, uh, during the COVID time, they were spending more time there, there were more money for them. But the people start going out, travel, go to work, then there is less people who are spending time on Facebook, or Netflix in particular, seeing movies, et cetera. And during that time, that actually, that was the first time that they lost the customer. So they didn't increase from in the one quarter. And that uh, uh, there was a very hard hit for the stock. From 700, it went to 170. I don't know, a factor uh, of four down maybe. Uh, this also for Facebook, Facebook was a $1 trillion company and it went from three, 380 to 160. Amazon, I mean, was not that bad. Uh, so around 30, uh, uh, 700, it went to something like uh, around 2000. And I'm talking about the previous price, not after a splitting, that was easier for me. But now I think it's split by a factor uh, I believe 20 now. Uh, and another one actually is the case uh, Shopify. Uh, Shopify went from uh, like 1700 to 320. Again, Shopify is, uh, um, it has been a split uh, 10 to one. So you are saying instead of 320, you will say $32. Uh, again, so from <clears throat> 1700, it went to 320. And uh, Shopify and Amazon, these are like the big, companies, especially, of course, Amazon is much bigger. And even for them, it went by a factor like half, like for Facebook, it was almost, I don't know, maybe a factor 2.5 that went, uh, Shopify, it went down by a factor, maybe more than five, close to six, actually. And the same thing for Netflix, maybe it went by a factor four. And there are some other things, like, for example, Wayfair. That's another one also about the retail and online retail. That went from 365 to 150, and now is actually around 50 or even 47 a few days ago. So it went again by a factor, I don't know, uh, six or seven down. 
So uh, this is the one that actually makes the people worried because if you have the stocks in these things, and especially NASDAQ, because it's more heavy on this type of uh, stock, like taking average of this, it was hit hard actually. And if you have just individual things, if you didn't take the diversification that I think you should, anyone who is going to the stock market should do the diversification otherwise it would be hard hit of course yes you might be lucky and get a good uh, um, a return for some particular ones but of course you might be unlucky and this happens like this one for very fair or others that happened it may happen to you and that would be a very bad situation even shopify actually very robust company they had a very good growth and the, the business model is nice and uh, still they went from 1700 to 300. It's a huge loss. So, uh, okay, so th that's the thing that I wanted to talk about now. So we talk about the reasons and the thing that happened, especially to tech market. Now we will go to back to 2000. There, there was the dot-com bubble crash. And that was the time that internet became all of a sudden a very important things. Uh, yes, I think there was some comment here that said that if you do it too much diversification, then essentially you are doing the average. The average is not bad, especially if it is hit hard like now, because then you will uh, see the pain if you are not doing the average. But yes, you can do diversification, but the issue that how much you want to do diversification. Maybe if you have believe in tech, then you will do it more like NASDAQ. Of course, during this bad time, you may go down more, but maybe during good time, you will go up more. Uh, so yes, diversification is the one that generally makes sure that, I mean, you are more like an average of the market. So you are not going up and down that bad or not that good. Uh, so that was some comments that was uh, mentioned. Uh, great. Uh, okay. So uh, that's uh, about this thing. So we talk about now. Now, what did happen in 2000? As I mentioned, there was this, at that time, there was a... Uh, economy, there was internet, and everyone believed that, oh, maybe there are lots of opportunities for uh, internet. And stocks went quite a bit up. So uh, this is some of the things that was uh, actually new to me. I went there and found some of this. I'll just give you some examples here. So uh, uh, there are some companies, and these are the companies that they were at that time and uh, until now. So some of this, for example, I will talk uh, Amazon, uh, or like Akamai. So uh, Amazon, of course, you know, uh, Akamai is the one that lots of you probably have used it. Uh, and we talk in uh, some other lives, especially with Professor David Carger, uh, we talk about it. Uh, and uh, that's a company that essentially has the content and still lots of companies are using it. So it's a very robust uh, company, especially now. And during that time, that was also a, uh, important important company so uh, the stock market for them it was actually quite interesting for amazon when it founded it was almost from zero dollar it went to something like 120 during like in 2000 so uh, from zero it went to 120 then interestingly it went down so during this one one and a half year to two years it went down from 100 to 20 to only uh, actually less than $5, maybe like around $4 actually. So just think about it. So we were talking about Wayfair coming down, maybe the uh, ratio of, I don't know, uh, one over seven uh, or a bit maybe more, like, like seven fold down. And at that time, Amazon came down by a, something like around a factor 30 down. That's a huge, I mean, so in some sense, you might be uh, happy now that say, okay, maybe this is the end of the, the low side of the market, but I'm just mentioning the 2000. And in 2000, this was the things. Now worse than that, actually, for Akamai at some point actually becomes over $300 the stock during the 2000. And then it went down less than $1. So a factor 300 down. Uh, just think about that and comparing with the current situation, I will say uh, that's actually, we are in a very good situation now. So let me just take a look at the questions. Uh, 
uh, great. Uh, so uh, that is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for that. And let me just uh, check Gmail in case uh, some person also, uh, good. Okay, so I got some comments and some questions that I will answer, hopefully, I mean, my understanding, and this is online, so it might be not the correct answer or even close answer. That's the thing that, uh, I, this is my thinking that I can mention. And uh, great. So during that time, uh, this is the thing that happened. So from something like uh, Akamai went from 300 to less than $1. So in some sense, uh, Wayfair is a, if, I mean, I'm just mentioning Wayfair because that has the worst things, but the same also, for example, for uh, Netflix or I don't know, Shopify, you can talk about Shopify as well, that went by a factor almost six down. So the question is that six is a lot, actually. It means that, I don't know, uh, if you had uh, something like 6 million, now you have only 1 million, which is a lot of loss, 5 million loss. But it can be much worse than that, again, and it was much worse than that. Now, interestingly, uh, for Amazon, what will happen, it went, as I mentioned, from $0 to 122,000, then it went down to less than $5, and then went up to 3,700. And again, I'm consider the split things. So 3,700, and then it is now down to 2,100 during this time. So in general, it went quite a bit up. And of course, this 120 was nothing, no barrier for it. However, if you consider Akamai, Akamai is then down from 300 to less than $1. Then it reached, and I think the highest was around 120. I think it is around probably 80, 90, around 90 now. Uh, but that's also, I mean, so it was 120 and then it went down. Uh, uh, good. So uh, that's uh, uh, the thing that happened, especially for tech market. And this is a question that actually came for me, but it can come for anyone else as well. And the uh, thing is that whether, is this the end of the, like the worst part of the market? or it can become worse. If you look at it, maybe during the past week, especially NASDAQ was good, so it went up. And this generally happens in July because of the, this is the July is that uh, there are four months essentially, which are the tech, I will call it tech months, uh, because there are uh, tech companies, they are mentioning their earnings. And during this time, the people are very hopeful about it and say that, okay, it will go up. And uh, they may become disappointed generally after July, maybe a little bit of August. And then after that, it comes down. So, and this happens for four times of the year. It's not just July. So I think uh, you can consider like from July, go three months later and three months later and three months later, you will find all the months. But I just mentioned it. So it went up a little bit in the last week or two. But um, the question is that whether it remains, goes down, what will happen to that? And as I mentioned, we went by a factor five, like five, six or seven down. But still we are much <laughs> better than something like a factor 300 or at least 30 for Amazon, the big company and it went down during this time. So it can go quite a bit down. And the question is that whether this can happen uh, again or not. So that's one question that we want to discuss here. So I mentioned the similarity between the dot com bubble. And now the question is uh, whether it will be real similar or not. Because if it is really similar to that, I think all people who had uh, something in NASDAQ essentially or in tech things, they should be very worried because this would be a big loss of money. And uh, as I mentioned, for example, even uh, S&P, I think for NASDAQ actually was uh, it took more time. So uh, S&P, the average, it took something like seven years to come to the same average of 2000. So uh, yes, at the end, we know that the market should go up, should, you should get it. The question is that how long does it take to that you will reach that point? And that's an important question, of course, because during this time, uh, eventually it may go up. But if you need your money to do something with that, then you cannot do that. Because if you do it, you are essentially selling at loss. Uh, great. So uh, that's one question that we want uh, to uh, talk and essentially dive deep into that. 
Uh, let me see whether I have uh, covered uh, everything uh, here. I think the and uh, great, yeah. So uh, one thing, uh, let's uh, go a little bit. Uh, so this is one of the main things I think I want to focus this live onto that. There are some other things that we can discuss, but whether this is similar to this 2000 or not. And again, this is my understanding that does not give you any guarantee, anything. And as you know, I think um, everyone who can, if one person can, uh, uh, predict what will happen in the market, see the futures. Actually, that's in the research, we will call it a profit. Uh, and we are discussing exactly the optimum, we call it uh, somehow the person who can see the future, we call it profit, or you can consider God or something, again, as, as a term for that. If there is such a person, then of course he can make, or she can make a lot of money. And so there is no such person as far as we know or we can do it maybe a little bit better than average, but not much more than that. And here, these are some understanding. It might be not correct, uh, but again, these are some understanding that I have it from this. Good. Now, uh, I want to say that this uh, crash, that was hard, but still not as hard as 2000. It will not be similar to that, to just give some ideas about it. So if you come back, the same thing actually happened for Microsoft. I don't have the numbers, but you can check it. That, but that went also, I think, by at least a factor of five down. I think sometime that I checked it, maybe more than that in 2000. Here, it didn't come that much down. It was 348, and it is now it is something like 260. I think it went down to 240. So from 340, it went to, say, 240. It's not very bad. Uh, like um, comparing to that time, that was at least by a factor of five. However, if you see that uh, Microsoft was a big company, even during that time, Apple and Microsoft, they were there, Amazon was just starting. There was no Facebook or Google at that time, at least at the public companies. So uh, at that time, the revenue of uh, Google actually was uh, uh, something. Uh, so uh, I think uh, uh, at, uh, Microsoft, uh, around 2000, the stock was around $30. And at that time, the revenue of the company was 22 billion. Uh, uh, sorry, that's the, uh, just make sure that I have it. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, at that time it was something like around uh, 22 billion, the revenue of the company. Now the stock is something around say 260. So by a factor, I don't know, eight up. And the current revenue is 170 billion in 2021. So uh, if you consider that one, so almost the same factor. Uh, uh, so yeah, actually more than the factor that the price that went, the price of the stock went up, uh, the revenue went up. And that's a very big thing. That's the one that I think it is very important to note that. The same things happens, you, you can think about for uh, Amazon, for Google. Of course, they were not there at that time. But they had a very rapid growth of, uh, especially in terms of uh, uh, revenue. I mean, the profit was similar, maybe not the same for Amazon, but lots of them actually had a great profit as well. So Facebook also had great profit. Uh, and uh, Microsoft, Google, uh, Amazon was a bit, I mean, uh, like maybe not that much great profit, but they still, uh, their revenue is quite a bit. Uh, that's one tool that I really had during this time, these tech companies are much, much stronger. And these are at that time, uh, I didn't check, but, uh, I'm not so sure how many of these companies were essentially the top companies in terms of value. Currently, the things went down, but like uh, maybe nine months ago, these top companies like uh, Apple, uh, Google, uh, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, these are, uh, they were the only companies that they were over 1 trillion. Maybe this is also this Aramco of uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, that was another one in terms of uh, for the oil companies, but there were. Uh, I, I don't think that there was any other companies at this scale. 
So these companies become trillion dollar company. Uh, there's a reason for that because they, as I mentioned, their revenue went up. So during all these years, the past 20 years, 21, 22 years, their revenue went quite a bit up. And uh, uh, one more thing. So the tech that we have it here, I mean, that I'm talking because I am involved in some of, I mean, understanding this tech and adding more to that and so on. So forth. Of course, not all aspects of it, but some aspects of it. I can say at this point, the tech is much, much more complicated. Uh, so um, what's the meaning of that? The meaning is that uh, maybe at that time that was just the internet. Here it's not just the internet. Almost everything is technology. If you even consider, for example, travel companies, I don't know, it's, uh, like something like airlines, uh, or other things, possibly even the oil companies, or like consider something like Visa, for example, uh, as a company, like Visa or MasterCard. Uh, these are the companies that almost everything are based on tech and everything is based on the internet. So in some sense, the growth is only in tech in some sense. Of course, there, uh, I mean, there might be healthcare or other things, but even healthcare, if you consider it, the main, uh, growth is coming from the computational. I think that may be a better way to mention it. That comes from the computational growth. So everything comes from the computations. And computations is somehow the core of tech. And in some sense, it's not the case that, uh, like, maybe at that time, 2000, these are some companies that the people had a hope in them. But here it's not just a hope, everything is there. And you just consider, for example, Google or uh, Facebook, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, these companies, they have built so much in their infrastructures. For example, just consider the cloud things. Maybe Amazon, uh, Microsoft, and Google, you know, they have spent a lot. The same thing even for Facebook, actually. They have their own cloud a lot. All of these things that we are doing in Instagram, Facebook are, are on that cloud. So they have such a cloud, but they just use it for their own purposes. Google was like that as well until recently. Google had also big cloud, probably more than Amazon or something to handle their things, but now they made it more public. So Facebook made, didn't make this move to make it more public, but they have a huge cloud. They are very complicated soft, uh, software. Like the number of lines of codes that are written here are huge. If you, do, if you just think about it. So this technology, and it is interesting. So for uh, if you consider these things, uh, maybe if you want to build a, uh, a company, a, a house or a building, the people who may do it, maybe they need less education. Here to write this software, you really, and to write it efficiently, you really need, uh, I mean, the people who have very well educated spend a lot of time, a lot of talent is needed here. I mean, of course, the talent is something that you can earn, but spending time, it means that because you are spending time, it would be very expensive to get this talent and ask them to do that. So in some sense, repeating this is not that easy. Of course, this company may copy a little bit from each other in terms of the product, but it's still not uh, maybe two, three companies that they have this technology. Not everyone has the same thing. So it's not that easy things to create these things and you really need to spend money. And all these things that we are taking for granted, for example, Google Maps, and lots of services or like all these uh, cloud things, these are some of these that we take it, or the one that we are currently using, YouTube or like LinkedIn and others. This type of thing that we can do actually such kind of broadcast that we are doing here on other places, that is a huge infrastructure there. There are huge, uh, like software is, are there. And even more importantly, uh, uh, these are, uh, uh, and even some other places, like for example, in the health, or I don't know, uh, retail, in travel, everything is also based on uh, the websites and the algorithms and the auctions. So every, these are all everything. And these top companies that we take companies, they are leaders of this. And uh, in some sense, as long as the leaders are there, yes, some other some a small company it may become essentially bankrupted during this time. I cannot refute that. But when generally the top guys are there, 
then it means that the little guys that they are working also on tech and on their things, they cannot go down that much. They may go by factor more down as we discussed, for example, for Shopify or Wayfair, say comparing to Amazon or Google or Microsoft that went less down. Uh, but generally they are not going that bad as long as the top guys are there. And the top guys are there. These are not something that we can easily replace. This is part of our life. And uh, as I mentioned, there was also one other issue that during this uh, COVID time, uh, what did happen, uh, the thing that has happened is that the people went to use this software a lot. And then after COVID, then the people are using it probably less. I will say probably because I, will, I want to add something to that. And note that also during this time, it was not the case that everything the effect of COVID is essentially is deleted or erased. Why? Because the infrastructure that we have it here. So maybe a few years ago, when you talk about working uh, remotely or having a meeting at, uh, then the people were not that easy about it. Even like if you work in the company and said, I want to work from home, the people maybe look at you differently if you are the only person who are working from home because, uh, Maybe said you are not doing the job that expected from you. But during this COVID, that actually proves that you can be at home and still work even harder because now you don't have the commute time, you are more relaxed. So in this case, all this infra and something like Zoom or others has been created that you can easily click a link and you become online. Not much uh, headache, hiccups, anything. You will just come and you will talk, you will start work, you have a whiteboard. And, th and this is actually something that Again, for Zoom was interesting because this was the thing that during the time that went quite up until 500, then it went down something around $80. And now it's going up. And there are some, I was reading some hedge funds and others that said we are investing in Zoom. And this is important because the people say that, okay, now you can actually work some part of your job at home and it, it, you are efficient and the people love it because they are with their family, they are it's more relaxed and you don't need to go travel. And even more importantly, I will, this is again my guess, but I, uh, my thing is that during this time that the gas prices went quite a bit high because of inflation and the factors that I have mentioned, I think it even reached eight, nine dollar in New York or uh, some part of in California, uh, and it is above five dollar in average. So I assume that this also this is another factor, maybe not the, the same effect that COVID had, but that had the effect that this tech company again become uh, popular. Why? Because probably the people don't want to travel to if they can do it work from home, they will do that because they can possibly save I don't know easily ten dollar. Uh, for one trip to go to the work and come back, you will save $10 essentially if you don't go there and you just do the work from home. So uh, this is some factor that you may see it again. And the good thing is that now there is infrastructure because of COVID, this has been expedited and everything is there. So that's one thing that now the people can uh, use it. It was not there before. And that's the thing that's another thing that even the COVID effect is not completely erased. And you should just, it take, maybe takes time. I mean, they, of course it would be some more uh, combination. Lots of companies ask at least two days per week or three days you should come to the work or something like, for example, at Tesla, Elon Musk mentioned that you should come uh, 40 hours beyond that you can work from home if you want to work more than that uh, but lots of companies still are doing remote or part-time and it is not considered bad anymore and even some people who are going at the office maybe in the meeting still these meetings are under zoom or i don't know chime at amazon or teams or i don't know hangout or something like this even though the people are very close by they prefer to do that so it means that that fact would be there and if you are in your office if you are in a meeting, that might be different. So you may have less time essentially to check Facebook or see other things. But if you are in your office and you are still doing the Hangouts, so you have your phone, possibly you can use the cell phone. And so this effect of the people are using less tech, I will say would be diminished in some sense. And still the people use a lot of tech when they are with their computers. So that's uh, somehow the summary of this part that I wanted to, uh, mentioned that I, 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 it may go down, it already went down. I don't believe that it will go that much like by a factor like 30 or 300 down. Uh, it, 
I think it, we are, it's not clear we are at the uh, bottom of the market. It may go still a bit more down, especially because of the interest rate. So I wanted to add uh, something also this, uh, especially this interest uh, hits some of these tech companies more. So one is COVID that hurt them, but the interest rate also hurt them more because lots of these tech companies, they may not have that much income now. And the people buy them based on the promise of growth. And of course, uh, it means that some of them actually, they have a loss, even Uber or Lyft, they didn't have a profit actually uh, until recently. Even Amazon, I think back in 2019, still it was not profitable. It means that the, they had a, their revenue went quite a bit up, but still their expenses is more than their revenue. Uh, so in that case, if the interest rate goes up, then uh, this is something that can hurt these companies because then this money that they are losing, like DoorDash, for example, or that they are just bleeding money. And when you lose money and the interest rates are high, then your business essentially would be in bad shape. Another issue, so this is some of the, I, I discussed about uh, tech stuff, but I want to say again, some adverse, uh, other adverse directions and say whether they can also change the whole things or not. Uh, so, yes, so we discussed about that. I mean, the tech will not go down because tech is everything now. But there are some other more adverse things like uh, interest rate that goes up. And this is essentially bad for tech companies that uh, not all of them, uh, so, but several of them essentially, they may not be that profitable. There is another issue here. Also, these other companies, some of these tech, for example, I think Apple or uh, Microsoft, uh, or other companies like banks, et cetera, they are also giving dividends. That's also very good because at least you will get part of your loss even if it goes down, a dividend. These are the things that in earnings, according to the number of shares, you may get part of this money that these guys, they earn, I mean, some money that you will get it essentially because you own this. So you get part of their profit. This does not often happen in tech companies. And I think like companies like Google, Facebook, and lots of other tech companies, they don't have such kind of dividends. So any profit that they will get, they spend, uh, or either they will give it to the uh, people higher ups there, which might be not the best things, but also they will invest it in the business. So there is not free money that they will give it back. And during this time that the interest rate goes up, uh, these guys that they don't have uh, that much uh, dividends and they may even lose money, uh, their stock uh, promise and stock growth might be more in danger. So that's a, uh, one thing that I want to say. So that's the reason that interest rates become very important for this. And as I mentioned, they may still, I mean, this is the, these uh, companies, they may still go down. And I mean, by some amount, but that's another, uh, so, so I mentioned that like uh, the long term that they don't go down because tech is there. But what about the short term? They may still go down and it has been, uh, like and it is like maybe nine months, but in 2000, it was almost one and a half year, two years that they went down. So it was quite a bit of time that they went down. It's not just uh, just uh, essentially going down for a long time. Here we have only nine months that they went down. And uh, however, there is uh, one issue here that I wanted to add. This, uh, as I mentioned, uh, interest rate plays a very important role because that uh, the people have less money to invest in these companies. And they cannot, if they have something, they to sell it. So there's, when the interest rate goes up, the money becomes more expensive. And so the people don't have that money to invest because uh, if you want to borrow as a day trader, the money, then you need to pay now, I don't know, 8% interest rate on that. And that's a huge money that the interest rate that you want to pay that. And also this company, they may lose money. That's another bad factor that can happen for them. So interest rate is bad, and that is quite interesting. Generally, <laughs> and this is the job of the uh, Fed, essentially, that they, they plan is to bring the interest rate down. I mean, I don't know. I think we are uh, seeing uh, at least until June, they were not that successful by increasing the rates. And they will currently considering just increasing the rate as much as possible. Now, that's interesting. If you nowadays look at the market, I think that happens during time when waiting generally i think each week on Thursday they are announcing employment rate or the number of 
people who filed for employment in the last week to the Thursdays. On Thursday, during the COVID time, whenever you saw that uh, the, uh, actually the number of uh, uh, people who filed for unemployment then went down, the interest, the stock market, they were very happy about it and everything was up. Interestingly, now it is the reverse of that happens. Whenever on Thursday, uh, like even in this last Thursday, this week was generally good essentially for stock. But uh, on this Thursday, then they, when they announced it, uh, that, it that uh, the, inter, uh, the un unemployment uh, uh, rate is still very low and it was even better than an than, uh, expectation. Like better means that less people file for uh, unemployment. Then all stock went down. Why? Because uh, the people, this is the current belief in the market that if the job market is strong, if the economy is strong, the demand is strong. So interest rate does not come down. And now uh, Fed increases needs to do very bold actions. The one that they took it like uh, 0 0.5 or 0 0.75. These are some of the moves that they didn't do it the past 40 years, some of them. At one time, they increased the interest rate. And this is the one that I mentioned. The interest rate goes high, then especially that hits uh, hard uh, tech market, uh, tech stocks, because they have uh, less, um, they are not giving that much. Uh, dividends and also lots of them they are not still profitable. It takes some time for them to become for profitable. So they will hit hard and that's the reason that they may go down. So here, so uh, that's the current story. So that means that everything can still go down. And here I wanted to show you some other things. Also say what can, whether this, this is a correct way of thinking because the interest rate can go up and up and that can hurt take more. And as we discussed again, it may take seven years to come back. The issue that whether it is the case or hopefully if you have a tech stock, maybe that takes uh, less time. So let me just uh, take I mean, some of this to make sure that there are about the comments, etc. Uh, that would be uh, great. Uh, Mm, uh, great. So, and again, uh, we are live and global. If you have a question, please uh, feel free to uh, email me. You can just, uh, my last name, hajiagai at gmail.com. And you can put the comments in uh, Instagram. You can put it, uh, Instagram, I may read it less uh, often, but YouTube and LinkedIn would be easier. If you want to put it, I mean, just always doesn't hurt to send me an email if I didn't answer your question. Uh, to my gmail account and uh, uh, great so we discussed this one that i think the tech is different from 2000 uh, however the issue is that now we are a different time and the government like the fed essentially decides to bring the interest rates up and the question is that uh, what will happen there because that hurts the tech market uh, great. So uh, let me show you uh, some other things. I will again talk about it. Uh, those people who can see, they can see that, but those that they will hear it or just uh, hear it maybe later on podcast, they can just uh, look at it. Uh, uh, I will just discuss uh, the content. Uh, great. So let me just uh, share this one. So uh, this is the one that we discussed about the S&P. And I think again, this is the chart that I have mentioned back in 2000 and then went down and we had a very high growth here. Uh, here, I wanted to say something. I think this is important and the people discuss less on that. And what is this factor? This factor is the US uh, interest and US uh, uh, national debt. So uh, let me say this one. Yes. Uh, so here, I mean, as you may see now, again, I'm repeating that. The one thing that uh, is very important here is the US national debt. Uh, the 
In GT, uh, the uh, GDP of US, it is like a gross domestic product. It is at the rate of 21 trillion, and not billion, 21 trillion currently. All right, like around 2021, 2022. And the current, uh, as you will see here in this, uh, things I will again read it for you. In 2021, the uh, debt of US, these are in terms of uh, billions, is $29 trillion debt. Something like 20, uh, I think this is not all to the foreign countries, maybe around 21 or 22 trillion of that is actually to the public. I mean, to social securities, to uh, uh, this kind of uh, retirement funds, etc. $29 trillion. According to uh, World Banks, if your ratio of uh, your debt to your uh, actual GDP is above 77%, then it is essentially very red sign. It's like, can be very dangerous. Currently, as you will see here, it is something like 124% for US. So somehow the, the thing that becomes dangerous is 77%, and now it is 120% for US. Uh, good. So, this is important. So the debt is high. Okay. So we are not naive here in a sense that this 77% that is mentioned for World Bank, maybe it is the case for other countries. Uh, like, for example, this was the issue for Greece. For a long time, they had a very hard time, I think, the past maybe 10 years or something, because their debt was high. And there was this kind of considering even they, uh, they are going. Uh, uh, you exit that they will consider it essentially they go out of euro uh, currency things because uh, of the issue that I will mention. So there is a difference, for example, between the Greece case and US case. At Greece, the people, uh, the debt was in euro and Greece was not deciding to print euro. So what did they could, I mean, uh, these, uh, they had two options. Either they could go out of Euro and they print their own money. Then of course, then the inflation comes or uh, you could, they could be under Euro, but they need to cut everything such that their essentially their debt goes down. The same issue even was for Spain at some level as well, but not as bad as uh, uh, Greece. So in US, it is not like that because this, uh, debt that US has is mainly on uh, dollar. And I mean, dollar is a good time now. I mean, everyone wants to get <laughs> dollar. So in that sense, de this debt is not that much of, a, like, a, is not the case that uh, uh, is, is not that killer. Like for example, the case that was for uh, some place like uh, uh, Greece or others because this is uh, somehow in the US dollar. At the end of the day, potentially US, uh, and at some point it was based on some, uh, uh, so this dollar was printing based on the amount of gold that the US government had. And they removed that, I think Congress removed that, I think, uh, I don't know, 50 years ago or even more than that. I don't remember the exact time, but they get rid of that things. Now, <coughs> potentially, and they can print money and pay all the debt. And they, and they are made in a good. The only downside would be inflation. Because again, this is the same thing in some sense has happened during this um, COVID time or like a great recession. They were somehow get borrowing from the thin air. That's a thing, but in some sense printing money. And there, when you put a lot of money inside the things, then the inflation goes up. So in some sense, uh, it, it, so that's one thing. So if they want to pay this one all of a sudden, they can, but the inflation may go up because there's a lot of money that we're doing. Of course, the inflation would be not as bad as I think some questions some people ask. Some countries like Iran or I don't know, Venezuela or others, uh, this will be muted over the world. The inflation would be not that bad even for the US alone because this is the debt of the whole debt to whole world. 
and they have reserve in dollar in several places. So in some sense, yes, it goes up, but not much up. Like it's not that, for the rest of the world, it might be even worse than US actually in terms of inflation. But, that's, but still there is inflation. Now, another interesting thing is also about inflation. Actually, inflation helps US debt in that sense because, I mean, the value of the money that they need to pay would be, it would be less valuable. So in some sense, your debt would be less. Why? Because if there is inflation, then your income goes up. And when the income uh, goes up, uh, then... Uh, uh, everything would be uh, somehow uh, better than they pay higher taxes and your income goes up. So in some sense, the inflation is not that bad actually for the uh, US debt. Now, uh, having uh, uh, said that, uh, so uh, this is the uh, issue that, uh, now I want to show you some other things again, I'm talking about this. Uh, so, uh, the issue is uh, this one, the interest, uh, let me actually go to this, uh, this other one to show this one. So here it shows the mortgage uh, average in the United States for 30 years. It is not quite interest rate. I mean, uh, there is one prime and the generally mortgage is uh, higher than that prime, maybe by number two, three plus something like this, sometimes four, but in some, in some sense, it shows the trend. It is quite related to the prime interest rate. And you will see that, uh, so even uh, here, uh, during the, like uh, 1981, the interest rates uh, were for mortgages for the home, essentially, in particular, this particular is for 30 year uh, fixed rate things. It was around 20%, 1981. And since then, the interest rate, so this is, I will consider this one somehow uh, as, to show the interest rate that what it happened during the past, I don't know, 30, 40 years. From 20%, it went all the way down into almost zero in uh, something like 2020 during the COVID time or 2021. So uh, from eight, from 20%, it went down. and. Uh, interestingly, also uh, you will uh, see that even during this uh, 2000 time, like uh, 2000 the crash, uh, still the interest rate was something like around seven eight percent. So uh, it, like uh, this mortgage rate that I'm considering. So it was quite high, and it is it was almost zero or near to like here. I think for the mortgage it was two point five. The zero means two point five. At that time, when the interest rate, the prime was almost zero, that became two point five. Uh, so it went down. So even at that time, the interest rate was high. But the interest rate uh, essentially monotonically went down almost to like very low number, one or two or three percent. Now, uh, what does this say? It, uh, and so this is the one that uh, this is important. And now uh, what it happened during this time, during this time, US government also get used to this idea of that, okay, there is, I think this probably is a thinking that you can maybe borrow more money and just spend it. So generally you have some deficit, the income that you have versus the expenses, general income is less than expenses, but doesn't matter, it just, uh, sell more government bonds, etc., and get the money and spend it. Of course, you can pot potentially print it, but printing is not a very well known, and they don't announce it that much that we are printing. But essentially, this is the printing that will happen during this time. But the US government also get used to this uh, low interest rate. And that was uh, very, so, so this is the one that I mentioned about the interest rate. So let's go back uh, to the, uh, and this is the national debt that we are talking about. So for example, in uh, 2000, the total uh, around 2000 was 5 trillion. These are about, again, uh, these are in terms of number of this times billions. So 5 trillion in 2000, and now in 2021, it is almost 30 trillion. So something around the factor six up during just this, uh, 20 years or 21 years. 
And it, if you see that, as I mentioned, in terms of the GDP also, it becomes 124%. And while in 2000, it was like something like 55%, below the 77% target rate of World Bank. And now this is another thing that I want to talk about it. Uh, yes, this is the interest that US pays. So this is the one that is the forecast of the interest that US pays. Uh, currently, in terms of billions, uh, it pays something like uh, 300 billion per year is the interest that US pays. And uh, in terms of the budget, it is like 5% of the budget. But uh, they essentially predicting if the interest rate goes up, it can be, and of course, not just interest rate goes can go up, also the US debt can go up. And uh, this would be something around 1 trillion that they need to pay per year just for the interest rate. And just uh, and this is actually a big uh, part of the money that US needs to spend. So let me just go back to Zoom now uh, to discuss uh, the things. Stop share. Uh, great. So I think we are back here. So I think these are just the main things that I want to show things. So uh, here, in summary, uh, the US uh, national debt went from uh, 5 trillion to almost 30 trillion now from 2000. And during this time, interest rate went down. So US borrowed more money. And uh, why they could afford it, and this is the big money, I think, uh, I don't have the exact number, but I think uh, currently the big things that a US pays, essentially like all the taxes that they will get it. Uh, so like social security and interest are the, this like somehow the top things that US pays. So in some sense, uh, because you have the deficit, not only you cannot pay the actual uh, money that you borrowed, but you need to uh, borrow more money to pay the interest on the, the previous things. That's a very bad situation in a sense that I, potentially you can go have a collapse essentially uh, in uh, this thing if this repeats a lot. But uh, during this time, the interest rate actually went down. When the interest rate from 2000, almost, I mean, monotonically, it went down. So US government also got used to this very low interest rate. This is the same thing that the tech company got used to. It. So uh, what is the summary? The, the summary is that uh, if the interest rate goes up, then just the interest would be the huge part of, so you may need to cut social security, lots of funding for lots of social things and like the defense and others to just pay the interest for the money that you borrowed. And even if you cannot make it even, you may need to borrow more money. You need to pay even more interest uh, to all get all of this to pay again the interest. So it's like a, not a good situation. And this is very important factor. So coming back to this factor that the interest rate can go up, but the issue is that the interest rate cannot remain that much up until US decides, I mean, to do something with the national debt. And if it goes high, that was actually, I think uh, this uh, uh, Secretary Treasury during the Trump administration, I think uh, Steven uh, Mnuchin, he mentioned actually during this COVID time, the people were afraid, he said, actually it is a very good time for us for some kinds of more spending on the social type of uh, work or something that is good more, more socially or social security and other stuff uh, or like maybe maintaining highway etc why because during this time this uh, bonds this money that we rent uh, that we borrowed before now we can actually return it and get re replace them with something that is much lower in terms of interest because the interest rate is zero so that actually would be very beneficial for us to just get rid of those high uh, interest rate bonds or others, and then just sell them and then buy in a state something which are much lower. Generally, are like 10 year things that they will buy. So they should be for something like 10 year. And anytime that some of them it ends, either you need to pay it or you need to borrow it from someone else to pay. So in some sense, you can now borrow it much easier because the cost of the money was low. 
So uh, that's important. So when the interest rate goes down, US government actually gets a lot of benefit out of this asset. And that's uh, very important. Uh, why, in some sense, the US government and tech companies, they are doing the same behavior right now. So if there is a good, uh, if the interest rate is low, that's good for both of them. And if it is high, it's bad for both of them. And in some sense, because the US government is there, it's some, you need to, they need to find some way of handling that. Now, for the national debt, there are several ways that you can bring it to bring it down. So of course, one is the, the most important one is the lowest interest rate, because then you pay less interest, possibly you can use that one, uh, I mean, for other activities that you have, and in particular, paying the debt that you have. That would be very important. The other one, you can increase tax revenue. That generally is not a very good thing, uh, because in that time, I mean, when you increase the taxes, it would be, again, less money at the hand of people, so the less economy, economic growth and so it's not good so low interest rate is good because it's actually that increases the economic uh, activity uh, uh, you can do cut spending again that's not very good because you put less money essentially this is somehow the reverse of uh, stimulus packages that you are putting there so you need to spend less and the people will be not happy the other way is also that is useful potential is shifting federal spending to some other activities, maybe to the, those that they create more jobs. That's the thing that they are uh, doing. I mean, there, there are some limitations for that. You cannot all of a sudden shift the money from some place to some other place and then make a lot of money. There is no such things at least that easy. There might be some opportunities, but not. So in some sense, Either you need to increase tax and cut the spending, which is bad for economy, or you need to have the lower interest rate. That's the one that helps you. And unfortunately, it would be good if there is during this opportunity of low interest rate that you pay less interest each year just for the money that you borrowed. You can actually return the principal of the money that you borrowed, but that does not happen, which is, I think, the wrong thing. It's, you should not have that much debt and increase it. But, but anyhow, in short, uh, this interest rate is not just the problem of uh, tech companies, but also the problem of US government. And one way or the other, and for the US government, be having a low interest rate is actually very beneficial. So in some sense, in the long run, at least for the current debt that, I don't know, became like six times just since 2000, uh, there should be, uh, uh, there is not much of, I mean, uh, uh, essentially uh, room. And the best way is that the interest rate should remain low. So the government, and I assume the Fed and others, they have all incentive to keep this one. They may, it may go up for some period, but they cannot be up for a long period because at that time, actually, the, with the current borrowing that US has done it, that would be, uh, very bad for the whole US uh, economy. And on top of that, uh, this is the uh, things that, uh, yeah, in some sense, inflation is also not very bad because the, the amount that you borrowed val is, is valued less essentially, and you can get more tax returns. So uh, having a higher inflation in general is not a very bad thing for the US. And uh, that might be, uh, of course, it cannot be too high because the people will be unhappy. So in some sense, the interest rate, I mean, my understanding that cannot be very, like kept high essentially, it should come down. That was the plan that Fed mentioned that they are increasing it for 2020 and maybe part of 2023, but then they need to bring it down. And I think that should come down. So it cannot be a very big problem because it can be a big problem for the US in the whole. And of course it can be a problem for tech companies, but I think that cannot be kept that high. So in that sense, this was somehow the summary of the things that we discussed that, uh, this, the tech is much more important now comparing to 2000. And also the interest rate cannot kept, I mean, should cannot be kept that much high because then US as a whole has much more problem if it remains that high. And so that says that this economy and the like tech should be, I mean, this hit hard, but hopefully 
I mean, at least for the people who have <laughs> these tech uh, stocks, it would be not back. And again, it took seven years for the, from 2000 to come back. In 2007, 2008, it took like four or five years. I assume maybe it takes still two, three years to come back to the current, to the high place that it was there, maybe around maybe even four years or five years. Uh, but it will come back, but it would be also not that much things because this is something that U.S. as a whole needs to find some solution for that. Uh, I think these are like the main things that I wanted to mention. Uh, there were uh, some questions here also, it is important I wanted to mention. So if you had uh, somehow the, uh, so this somehow we answer this, but there are some other things that the people ask also the questions. And uh, like, uh, for example, crypto versus a stock, which one essentially I mean, it's better or worse. Uh, of course, the stock went down, uh, but uh, crypto actually, some think like uh, I was checking uh, some cryptocurrency like Luna from went from over one hundred dollar to zero essentially, or zero point zero 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 something like this. So they went uh, hugely down, and uh, Bitcoin is not that bad. From sixty five thousand, it went to like eighteen, I think, thousand or um, similar thing for Ethereum went from 4,800 to something around 1,000. Like it's not that bad comparing to a stock, like similar to some something like Shopify, even probably better than Shopify or uh, even uh, something like Netflix. So the top guys, Ethereum and Bitcoin, they kept the things, but others, they went down. Of course, for a crypto, the issue is that, I mean, for companies, there are some assets that the company has, so it cannot go below that asset unless there is a lot of debt on the company. But for cryptos, there is no such lower bound. The only thing is the credit of the people who have it. So those people who bought crypto, if they all decide to sell it, of course, the price goes down, but they may not decide to do that. So in that sense, that's the reason something like uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum, these are like more famous guys. These are like, I will say, Google or Amazon or Microsoft of <laughs> essentially crypto, they are, uh, the people have more value there. So they don't sell it. They hope that it goes up again. So as long as they don't sell it, then it does not come down. But there is no lower bound in that sense, obvious thing that there is some value for the Bitcoin per se, just the credit and the trust that the people have on that. But uh, one other interesting thing also here I wanted to um, discuss, uh, the things between uh, the thing that happens. So if you had, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, something like a stock market, uh, like uh, during this time that uh, Fed has done it, uh, what did they do? They have increased, uh, they decreased the interest rate to zero during the COVID time. They poured a lot of money. They have added a stimul uh, like a simulation, um, stimulations packages. So they poured money into, a lot of money is poured into the economy. And of course, that was the cause that now we have the inflation. One year ago, it was to them that's actually huge. Uh, and they, they didn't, they ignored it. I think that is a, that was a wrong move to ignore it. And I assume that they have lots of data. And said, no, it is a temporary, it will be gone. And it was not, it's not gone. So what did happen during this time, they uh, put a lot of money, they made the stock market very hot. And the people, okay, so lots of people, they may say, this is, I think the stock is going up. This is a good, let's buy it. And then the stock went down for some of them, like very hard, for example, for Shopify or <clears throat> Wayfair or even Netflix or others. Of course, these are individual companies, but in average also went quite a bit down. In some sense, uh, <clears throat> why? Because uh, then Fed were thinking that it's temporary, this inflation, and then all of a sudden turned their position and completely the reverse. So they decided, okay, we want to put all money there. They didn't even decrease the amount of money that they were spending and uh, like putting the money. And then all of a sudden they decided they want to come down. So they went up and then down after that. Of course, this is not a very good move by any player in this game. So if you consider it, uh, the one interesting thing, the difference between crypto and stock is that there is SEC, uh, uh, I forgot the exact name of that, but the SEC is a federal agency that checks actually everything about stocks. So if you sell and buy in a large volume, they, you need to mention to that, or like the uh, people in the company, I mean, the, like for example, uh, 
if you want to buy a large number or something, you should mention to them, they will control everything. The issue is that they do, and that's actually very good things. That's one of the things that I have seen, uh, like this is very important to see in some stock market, that you will see some of this uh, stock, for example, Google, especially like top companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, uh, just before the bell, like generally at 4 p.m., they are announcing the earnings. Before the bell, you will see some move maybe up or down. And after that, sometime, for example, for Facebook, it was uh, just, I think they lost something like 200 billion just in a day after the earnings. What's the meaning of that? The, the issue is that it means that there is not much leaking of information. Because if the people know that the situation is bad, of course, they don't know how much would be the effect. But if they know that, then you should not see somehow increase in the stock price before 4 p.m. in the day. And then after that, everything essentially crashed by, I don't know, 20% or more essentially or I think maybe 22%, 24% for Facebook or the same for Netflix. So that says actually some kind of confidence in the market because lots of people, I mean, if the stock goes up the two, three minutes before and then, uh, I don't know, 30 minutes later, it is that down, probably not too many people knew about this information because if they had it, probably used it. And this, so in some sense, he said the idea is that the knowledge in some sense is in the price. So if the price is going up, it means that there is not much knowledge because if there was a knowledge, the price should not going up that much. That in some sense that that actually works quite well, like sick and the fact that not inside information or something is big. However, here the Fed is something beyond uh, uh, like sick that other part of the government. And they can spend money. And I think this way is the one that they have. I think it was not the correct way. Lots of people maybe lost money because of the, the, the things that they, the, the actions that they took it. They didn't, uh, I mean, taper it down or they didn't do it this kind of quantitative tightening much earlier. And if it happened, then probably the price of this stock, they didn't go up that much. And if the people bought at that time, probably they didn't come down that much. So uh, then the loss would be much less. So, but when you take the action like this, by full force you go up, and then by full force you go down, that of course there is some uh, penalties that unfortunately this penalty is paid by investors. And I think that's a thing that during the past year, essentially, uh, apparently the uh, gap between like the, uh, between the wealthy people and the poor people actually uh, that became less and less because the wealthy people actually lost a lot of money uh, in these things. And I think that I don't consider it that's a correct move. And the fact that SEC is there and check everything, that's very good because make sure that such kind of thing does not happen. But in some sense, uh, Federal Reserve is something beyond SEC. And they do some moves that is not controlled. And they are free, essentially, players that they can do any move. And unfortunately, uh, those type of things can change the market a lot and change the market. So lots of people had the loss because of this move that should have not happened, I assume, because they had all the data. They should have uh, tapered it down or uh, do this quantitative tightening much earlier, such that the prices that don't go up that much. And they don't go down that much. This is, I think, the worse things. And I mean, if this is also interesting, this is even worse than that. Uh, like, for example, if you are doing trading, if you get some um, money, you need to, for any, for any uh, like profit that you will get it from a stock market, you need to pay actually, a, and if it's a short term, you need to pay the same rate as your salary as a taxes. So if you get some money, so during this time, I don't know, if you got $1 million, then during this time, I don't know, maybe some rate of it, say 40, 50% you paid as a tax uh, to local, to government, to global, to federal and state and other uh, municipals, others. But now if say during this time, because of this action that Fed actually has done it, then you may lost 2 million. So then you, that would be okay. Uh, and apparently the losses, you can also deduct it. Maybe so, okay, I got this money, 1 million, I paid the taxes. Now it is 2 million loss, let me collect the money. It is not the case. So that's another unfairness essentially in the rules that 
uh, this is somehow there is a limitations for the amount that you can deduct when you lose money. It is only 3,000. So if you got 1 million as a like a profit, then you paid, I don't know, like something like 400K uh, for 500K for the tax. But now you have 2 million. You decide that, okay, you want to sell and you will come out of the market. This is not a good move. But of course, if the, the prices are going down, somebody may decide to do that. If you do that, you have 2 million loss. In each year, you can only deduct three and assume that you don't want to go to the market because if you go to the market, you have some profit later, then you can cancel out. But if you don't go to the market, then each year you can have only 3,000 3, of all this uh, 2 million deduct this part, not the whole tax deduction. This is the part that you can deduct for your income because of the loss. So it's a very bad situation for you if you want to come out after selling all these things, because even the taxes that you pay to the government, you cannot collect it. I think the fair thing is that like, yeah, if during this time you had some profit, you should, and now you have a loss, at least those profit that you pay to the government, the tax, you should be able to cancel out this one. It is not the case. So it's not symmetric, unfortunately. Anyhow, I think this is important. This is, and I wanted to come to this question about crypto. Now in the crypto, uh, this is uh, something uh, which is also interesting as happening. In crypto, there is no something, such thing like SEC that control this. And as I mentioned, I think the fact that Fed is above SEC is, was very bad in this case for the people who invested in this side. Because they have done some move that it didn't hurt them that much maybe, or they didn't feel it as an individual person, but lots of individuals actually got hurt because of this. Uh, however, now in the crypto, there is no such things like uh, something like SEC that uh, have some rules. Now, what it happened, that was a few years ago. That was actually, this is the move. And the big players, again, here Fed was a big player, put a lot of money. Of course, a small players, they cannot do it unless they form a coalition, which is very hard. This is the something like uh, coalition game theory. You can talk more about it, but I don't want to go to the details there. But here you have a big player fed in the previous case. Now here, that's interesting thing that happened for crypto market. So uh, Elon Musk decided, uh, mentioned that uh, they bought actually, I think 1.5 billion or even more, some huge range essentially in the crypto, at least in the crypto <clears throat> sense, it was huge. They announced that, <clears throat> Tesla bought a lot of crypto after they bought it. These are the same type of moves that I will can compare it with the same thing that Fed has done it. Now, uh, he mentioned that actually we bought this amount of things and we believe in crypto, we can sell even the, uh, this, uh, um, uh, you can buy now Tesla with Tesla cars with the crypto. All of a sudden, the, the because of this investment and the fact that I mean, the people have the prospect for it, the price went quite a bit up. Then a few months later, I think, or some time period later, he came say, okay, <laughs> here, um, I mean, we thought that, okay, the crypto, mining crypto is not good for the economy. So we just decided to sell that and we don't accept this <laughs> thing. That was somehow huge blow to the market. Why? Because you came, this is something it is called a Stackelberg equilibrium. You will announce some move and this, with this move, because you are a big player, you will make sure that the worst case equilibrium is the best for you. Like among all options, this is somehow the worst is the best for you. He will announce it, the price goes up, and at that time he sells it. He gets lots of benefit because it's a big market and can do that. Such kind of things, you often, you cannot do it in sick and you will be much more responsible for doing that. I think Elon actually had done something like this. Uh, at some point he mentioned for Tesla and there was some penalties for that, for the Tesla as a company and the stock shares of, or stock price of Tesla had affected. So in some sense for the companies, you cannot do that. For crypto, big players can potentially come, they will, buy something, they announce it as some kind of a Stackelberg thing, the people buy more and then at that time sell it and they get some profit out of it. Uh, and if you are a big player potentially and you are coming at the right time, you can actually affect the market to your benefit. This is something that they may not happen for a stock. So a stock, there is two difference is that there are some rules like this kind of fake rules that uh, 
uh, you can uh, uh, do it. And in addition of the tech rules, also there are some base for the company. There are some assets like Google or like Microsoft. Google, for example, has lots of <laughs> uh, like buildings in the best places in all over the world. They own lots of these buildings. So these are assets that they have or the cash, Apple, the same things. So they have lots of cash. So they have something that cannot go below that. Uh, and also there are sick that controls them very tightly. Any, play, any place that there are some things that is more less distributed, there is no rules like say Fed, which is above SEC here, or like, for example, some big player like Elon Musk or others or Tesla, they will come and change the market to their benefit or the benefit, I mean, for some goals, maybe not completely their benefit, sometimes their benefit, sometimes like, for example, for the Fed, maybe say that for the benefit of the whole nation. But if you do that, then you may lose much worse because there is not much control and there are some leakage of information, et cetera, that can be the case. So this was some something that I wanted to answer regarding this one, that what happened there. And uh, so uh, that's, uh, I think, uh, let me see, is there anything else I wanted to say um, for, uh, 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 great. Yeah, uh, so one other thing also in general, I think we talk a little bit about the uh, uh, diversifications. That's also important. I think if you do some of this, uh, Stocks. It is very important to diversify. As we discussed, if you diversify too much, it would be the average of the market. You would be Dow or Nasdaq or S and P. But if so, then there is a less risk, but of course less gain. If you do it less diversification, there's more risk and more uh, potentially more gain as well. But, but I will say it is, to my experience, if you diversify even among tech, you may have. I mean, different sector of tech that you can diversify, like healthcare or travel or other. These are some parts of tech, as I mentioned, almost everything is tech nowadays. And then you can get actually much more, uh, uh, like you would, that would be much less risky essentially to do that. I think I like diversification and I think it would be too risky without diversification. Again, I'm talking about some company like Netflix. It was their 22 years, very robust company. It went up essentially almost all the time. And all of a sudden, by just some bad things, essentially went from 691 to something around 170, 160. Like, I don't know, one, uh, one third of one fourth of the price. So that's uh, one thing. And uh, generally also, uh, this is in downturn. <clears throat> Uh, so if you do day trading, you may get some profit, but uh, the idea that if you already have a, some money there, uh, the issue is that by it, when the market is so volatile, <coughs> trading, to my experience, is uh, unless you have the cash that you will spend a little bit of that, that you may get some profit out of it. Uh, but if you have the market and you have a huge assets already and they are down, by just day trading, actually, you may lose more. So <clears throat> this is uh, uh, some uh, things that I have. Uh, I mean, this is my wording, essentially, I mentioned for that. That might be interesting. So uh, like you can consider if you have some assets in the stock market, you may consider you are in the airplane. In the airplane, you may have some turbulence. You may have very bad turbulence. Of course, there is a uh, time that it may crashes. The probability is low, but there is a thing that you will lose everything. But yeah, but at that time, probably if there is some turbulence, if you decide to get off of out of the airplane, there's a good chance that you may die actually at that time, especially if it's not equipped well with that. The best way is to just be in the airplane, tolerate the turbulence, and there's a very good probability that you are landing essentially safely. So that's the advice. I mean, I took it for my I, myself, and I think that worked quite well for me so far. But of course, the others, yeah, it may, you may go down, it may take five years some time to go up. But the issue is that that can be, if you try to go get out of the airplane, it can be very deadly. And again, here, as I mentioned, because of the US tax code, even you cannot get those benefits of the, the taxes, even that you paid on your profit, you cannot recover it because like, I don't know, if you have uh, something like 2 million loss, <laughs> I'm just saying some number. Then 3,000 per year, you can deduct it. Let's say how many years would be that that you can, 
your probably grand grandchildren still if they deduct it, they cannot deduct that one in terms of just the taxes that you lost. So that's uh, something, and I think this is another quote, I think uh, this one from Warren Buffett, that's also interesting. Uh, and this is also talk about this, it may take actually a few years to come back. Uh, that is the thing that he said that the stock market actually goes down by elevator uh, and uh, it may come up this escalator. Essentially, it means that you can have a big drop. Again, this big drop is uh, here, we are talking about big drop, it may happen nine months essentially it went the stock went down and like maybe one and a half years in 2000 it went down but uh, escalator generally means if it went that much long maybe it takes i don't know three years to come up or it, it generally the, the amount the, the time the, that it went down is shorter than the time that it comes up that's the concept of going down by elevator and come up by um, escalator yeah, so I think uh, that's all the things that I wanted uh, uh, to cover. And again, we try to have some understanding about the current market. I mean, the things the thing that can help the market, especially the tech. I was focusing more on tech, and but it was apply almost for lots of other part of the uh, things. But maybe the healthcare would be different things. So that would be there is some part of tech in it but there are some other factors, like if there's another COVID or something is there. But uh, yeah, but I think uh, just the fact that, uh, I mean, tech is there, the people got used to it, and still they are using there. And uh, so it cannot uh, go, the tech is almost everything and the people get used to it. It may go down, but still the people are using a lot of tech. And at the same time, the interest rate, which is bad for tech stock generally, if it goes up, also is bad for the whole US economy and US debt. So that cannot go up, I mean, because US needs to do something for that. And so in that sense, I mean, it's, I uh, like for the people who have a stock in that, I hope that, I mean, this will not come down that much. Still, it may come down by some factor, but I think it may go up hopefully at some point. I'm just uh, uh, checking uh, uh, something. I think I have answered uh, several of these uh, questions. If you have uh, still some questions, I think uh, please uh, feel free to, mention i will be happy to answer you can always email me i have answered some of them uh, and uh, one uh, last but uh, not least i mean i just wanted to also mention i mean this uh, website uh, let me just share this uh, so i didn't want to say at the beginning but this is i mean the website that i have it actually for a predictor this is for the uh, website. So this is talking about the short term prediction, not long term or something like this, say for 24 hours or 48 hours. There are, I mean, there is some video here that you can take a look at it and it gives you some ideas. For example, this is the part that it tried to give you the estimate for the rest of the day uh, based on the data that say that what this today is similar to which other day. That actually gives you a very good understanding about the whole system. I mean, that is useful. I mean, I use it quite a bit. Uh, this one is another one that also gives you some ideas that, for example, say based on the, there are several APIs or the polls of the people who are participating. It gives you essentially the probability that goes more than 1% or remain within 1% or goes down by 1% up or down. That gives you that you can actually get for different stocks uh, more uh, like there. And if you sign in, I mean, you can get a, uh, 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 more of uh, these things as well. Uh, so that is uh, something that uh, you can uh, take a look at it. Uh, so here, for example, it, this is the one also, it is very useful that actually uh, I get through emails, but here you can actually register for some of this and any news that happens, any up and down, it also lets you know. If you do notification sound, also it gives you the notifications and you know about uh, the, things that happened in the market. It's very useful. And if you want actually here, you, you can participate in the polls. You can also participate in terms of uh, API. By an API, you can have a program and his API support. You will answer these questions and then you can go here and uh, potentially uh, buy some of this, for example, for the some of this stock. It, give you some options that you can purchase the results there. Uh, I mean, if you come to the website, I think you can use lots of free stuff that you can use it there. 
I mean, uh, if you think that the advertise, there are some advertisements by Google on the top. If you feel that it's relevant, you can click on that. That helps because it's a lot of computation actually that currently I'm uh, uh, paying for that. If you are interested in like more activity of this or funding, et cetera, you can also, I mean, email me. But, but anyhow, so this was some extra thing I want to mention that these are some free things that I created, I use it myself. So I made it available for others that they can uh, use it. Uh, great. So uh, I think uh, there, I think I have uh, almost answered any question that I got during this. I read some of them and they answered that. Uh, if there is nothing else, I think uh, we are ending the live uh, here uh, at uh, this point. And you can, again, everything is recorded so you can take a look at them. And uh, later for this one, please come and join for the future lives. <clears throat> Thanks for your time. <clears throat> and hopefully some of these that I have mentioned, these are like some kind of dive deep things will be useful for you if you want to think more about this. And if you want to do research, essentially it's a nice problem set of research and uh, other than that. Uh, thanks again for joining. And I hope that you enjoy the live whenever you are watching now have watched it or you will see it in the future. We have also the podcast version of that. You can also do it. And again, I try to even some diagram that I showed for the people. Now I have tried to just mention in words, such as if, say if you are driving still, you can listen to this. And thanks everyone and uh, talk to you later. Bye.